this is a pretty important topic for us to cover because this is a fairly persistent, I don't know if myth is the right word, but this is a, a fairly consistent uh, old world practice that really needs to kind of go away. And of course, what we're talking about is using overweighted implements to somehow uh, modify adaptations to our skill training. And which, you know, in the striking world is often seen as uh, punching with weight or wearing uh, ankle and wrist weights, you know, while doing your moves or wearing weighted clothing. Kyle Hill, back when he was doing the Because Science show, covered this uh, with, you know, whether you should wear Goku's weighted clothes or not. And then he did a follow up video on his uh, current channel. Um, I'll link those below and I'll, I will link uh, the studies that I bring up as well. So uh, that way you can go check out the research. And I, I will say this, and I'm absolutely in agreement with Kyle on this, is the fact that there is not nearly enough research on this. And so when we look at some of the effects, we have to take a lot of this with a grain of salt uh, because the, the research is far from, from completely con conclusive. Um, it, this is more of, there's a fair amount of ambiguity and it just appears that the available evidence points in the direction away from this, not towards this. So there are a couple of points that we have to, uh, go over. And again, the, the studies will be linked below, so I'm not going to enumerate them here. Um, but it's well worth your time to, to take a look at them if you're interested in kind of the nerdier side of things. But here are the reasons why, generally speaking, you do not want to be using overweighted implements for your skill work. Now, the number one thing, the, the obvious low hanging fruit that everybody talks about is that if you are using free weight resistance, which is the most common thing, uh, overweighted bats and balls, a lot of these studies are baseball related just because it's such a popular thing and it's easier to study. And a lot of these studies are done in university settings where there's a lot of baseball teams. You get the picture, right? Um, free weight resistance is basically generally going in the wrong direction. Most of the athletic things that we do are in the plane of movement, uh, you know, of ambulatory movement, where we are moving laterally across the field, throwing across the field, uh, you know, whether we're punching and kicking, throwing a ball, running, you know, most of that stuff is lateral and weight is going in the direction of gravity. And so what that ends up doing is that ends up placing some torque force on our joints. And so it, it, this should go without saying, but very obviously speaking, if you are not going against the resistance of the weight, you are not going to build up any additional strength because you're not actually moving the resistance. Now, truth be said, you're moving the mass. There's a little bit of resistance. You know, all, all stimuli and stress is going to have some effect. It's just a matter of whether or not it's meaningful, positive or negative, neutral, etc. cetera. Um, but the fact is that generally speaking, the weight's moving in the wrong direction, which basically means it's not really gonna make you any stronger. Now, there was at least one study that, that showed that when people were wearing weighted vests, they uh, you know, got temporarily stronger, uh, but it was in the direction of gravity. It was like you know jumping and squatting, and they were still training on top of that. So there's confounding variables there. Um, so yeah, weight going in the wrong direction is kind of a big deal. And we're gonna come back to that in a second too. Um, now, there was a study with uh, Brad Schoenfeld that, that he did um, where he identified that when you get down to below 20% of your one rep max, you stop seeing any kind of, of, of meaningful or significant, statistically significant gains in hypertrophy, much less strength, um, which all of these skill movements are well below one rep max level. So the, the fact is that like you already know the, the weight's not enough, the overload weight's not enough to actually produce any meaningful um, you know, modification in your strength or, or, or tissue remodeling, um, at least in the direction of positive adaptations. So that's another nail in the coffin. Um, and we should bring this up too. Um, I did a little short on this recently. 
Uh, but Meadow Henselman's put up a, a study on his Instagram where, uh, or at least a research review, where he basically said that um, we, we basically now have, uh, uh, it was like a 0.95 correlation between muscle size and strength uh, for in, within power lifters. Now, there are interesting things there because, you know, if, like, he, like he said, the example he used, if, if you threw bodybuilders into that mix, the, that correlation would change. So it's not that muscle size itself increases strength. It's more like it increases the platform for strength. And so the idea that, that uh, the strongest power lifters also correlate to being the most muscular power lifters basically says that have a big platform and practice the skill, right? And it points to the idea of strength being a skill. That makes sense. In fact, um, one of the things that we see there is that over and over and over again, anytime these studies come out, uh, the, the minimum effective dose study uh, that, that I like to, to point to from time to time um, recommends, you know, greater than 80% of one, of one RM uh, for strength development. And we see that kind of over and over and over again, this, like you have to practice the skill of strength. Now, the cool thing is this is actually supported by another really strange, strange correlation study. This is, this is not high quality evidence. And unfortunately, a lot of these baseball studies are actually kind of poor quality. Um, so, you know, like low confidence. So it's, Again, it's hard to draw a lot of meaningful conclusions. It's just that the available data we have points against using weighted implements. Um, but so we know that the, the movement patterns do change with load and we do see that time and time again. And there was at least one study that I'm aware of um, that pointed to a roughly 20% over or under on whatever the, uh, the actual uh, game use uh, implement was in this case it was a baseball five ounces so you have a one ounce margin on either side where the movement pattern was preserved but if the weight went under that and if the weight went over that the movement pattern changed in a significant way and that's kind of interesting right because again if we're talking about one rep max strength well 80 percent is 20 percent shy of your one rep max and so it may be that training specificity of getting the movement pattern correct, even if it is in the same direction, it's not gonna be necessarily the same movement pattern. And that again means that we really kind of need to be fairly specific with, uh, what, we're, with what we're using and what we're doing. Um, and then finally, uh, at least some of the studies, and this, was, this one is one that's kind of all over the board, but, um, there's actually a, a potential for injury risk and it seems to be possibly due to the changes in movement pattern, the added torque from the, the weight going in the wrong direction, all of that. Um, and that's, that's actually kind of a, a, you know, a, another thing. I don't like to be kind of doom and gloom about injury because we know that a, a lot of injury is uh, like your propensity for injury is often genetically predetermined. At least it seems that way. Um, and just because you can get injured doesn't mean you will. And it's, you know, having a positivity bias tends to be better. Um, it's good not to catastrophize. So we don't want to overstate that. But the fact is that there, there was an observed increase in injury, at least in some of the studies um, around the use of overweighted implements. And some of that may be the fact that these people are trying to move with the same velocity as they do with a normal implement and yet uh, are doing so with an altered movement pattern. And if you do so with an altered movement pattern, we see the same thing in weightlifting. If you deviate from what your stable form is supposed to be, oftentimes you end up loading tissues that are not prepared to be loaded. And that seems to be a large part of where injury comes from. So, you know, you do potentially run the extra risk of injury there. So really what we're seeing with this then is the same advice that I have been given for years, and I'm certainly not the only one that has been saying it, but the fact is that you are better off practicing your skill set, doing your strength and conditioning work separately as separate things. Strength and conditioning is important. 
skill work is important. If you try to mix the two together, you often end up getting subpar results for both. If you try to practice your skills under load, you'll probably not be using enough weight to cause any kind of meaningful strength and hypertrophy changes, and you will in fact be practicing your skills slower and with different movement patterns. So the best of worlds here is that you end up with kind of like a one step forward, one step back, or even a one step forward, two steps back kind of approach which basically is no good for anybody. I mean, you can get all of the endurance conditioning you need for your sport uh, by doing standard skill-based conditioning, doing rounds, uh, doing your bag work, doing your pad work, all of that kind of stuff. And then just doing general preparedness conditioning, like, you know, running, hitting the rower, <laughs> doing sled drags, stuff like that. Um, and then your, your, your strength and power will be infinitely more magnified by actually doing strength and power work with normal resistance. Now, what we didn't bring in here is the use of potentially like elastic bands, right? Using resistance bands because resistance bands, you could potentially be hooking up in the plane of resistance of the skill. Well, I am hesitating on that still because if we're talking about this little block right here again you're probably not going to be getting anywhere close to that you know that that 20 percent threshold uh to be doing you know to to be doing meaningful uh work you're probably going to be changing your movement pattern um you know it it still seems like a bad idea it seems like maybe a better idea than using free weight just because you can at least get it in line with the resistance. And no doubt, I mean, adding any resistance is going to make you a little bit stronger, at least accommodating to that resistance, but it's not going to necessarily make meaningful changes in the long term. Like you would have to continue adding resistance and adding resistance and adding resistance. And again, if you're just doing it for conditioning, just do your conditioning. So, in my opinion, even though it's not ironclad, set in stone data, in my opinion, it is absolutely not worth your time to try to load your skill movements. It, it just doesn't make any sense. It makes your workouts worse. It doesn't necessarily make them better. And any adaptations that are positive that you do get from them could actually be greatly improved by actually separating the workouts into their components and doing them more specifically. So in, in that case, I mean, I know nobody wants to do two a day workouts or anything like that, but in that case, really what you need to be doing is separated workouts. But really the short of it is, it's just not a good idea to load your skill work um, in spite of how kind of tangential and, and, and weak the evidence might be, it's still pretty much all points away from the direction of doing that. So. Right. Just be more intelligent about your training. And I, I really honestly believe that you were going to have significantly better results doing that. Um, so I think that's it. And I will talk to you guys later. Good journey. Hey, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, share, do all the other social media stuff. You can check out our other socials as well as take a look at some of the merchandise that we have for offer in the links below. And if you happen to be in the Phoenix metro area, stop in, come in for a class, come in just to say hi. Uh, we'd love to meet you. Until next time, good journey.